Hey, what's going on, guys? If you've been following my channel for a while, then you probably know that I like to take dif uh, difficult concepts and try to explain them in a simple way so that you can really wrap your head around it. So in this video, I'm going to try and explain the basics of MVC. Now, I'm not going to go into too much depth because I want this to be beginner friendly. I also want it to be short. And like I say in many of these videos, feel free to share your opinion and knowledge or disagree. Uh, just be respectful to everybody. So MVC stands for Model View Controller, and it's a software architectural design pattern. Now, I'm explaining this from a web development point of view. It works a little different for other types of programming, and some programmers even say that you can't have true MVC in web development or in a web framework. And I'm not going to debate whether that's true or not, but uh, I'm going to be explaining things from a web dev perspective. All right, so MVC is definitely one of the most frequently used design patterns most of the popular web frameworks use at least some parts of MVC and the general purpose or goal is to separate functionality not just functionality but logic and the interface um, all kinds of things in, in an application so this promotes organized programming and it allows multiple developers to work on the same project with ease okay and this is somewhat true for all design patterns but especially with MVC so before we take a look at the different components that make up MVC, let's take a look at some popular frameworks that use MVC concepts. Now notice I said MVC concepts. The reason for that is because MVC can mean different things to different people, and frameworks can kind of borrow some of the concepts and still be considered MVC. And a good example of that would be something like Ruby on Rails or PHP Code Igniter. These frameworks actually have folders in their file structure called, uh, or a folder structure called models, views, and controllers. And then something like Django for Python just borrows certain concepts, but doesn't actually have that strict folder structure. And then another thing that can happen is one framework will put one aspect of the app in the controller, and then another one would put it in the model. So I think that's why MVC is so confusing, because there's not just one way to do it. There's actually uh, many, many ways to do it. All right, so we're going to now get into the three components of MVC, which is Model View Controller. So first we have the model, which is responsible for getting and manipulating the data. So it's basically the brain of the application. Usually it interacts with some kind of database. This could be a relational database like MySQL or a NoSQL database like MongoDB. It really doesn't matter. And in many frameworks uh, that support multiple databases, the model code will stay the exact same. Okay, it's just the database driver that needs to change. And it doesn't even uh, it doesn't even have to be a database that works with it. It could be a simple file. Okay, so you could just you could have your model interact with a JSON file and pull data from that. All right, so it takes care of queries like select, insert, update, delete. The model also communicates with the controller in most cases. The controller can request data through the model. And in most cases, the controller updates the view. But with some frameworks, the model can actually update it directly, update the view. Another example of what makes MVC complicated. So just realize that there's different implementations, and they can act differently from framework to framework. All right, so next we have the view, and you can probably guess what that takes care of, that that's the actual view of the application. So it's the user interface. It's what the user sees when they interact with the application. So the view usually consists of HTML and CSS, along with dynamic values sent from the controller. So the controller does communicate with the view, uh, as well as the model. Now, depending on which framework you use, the template engine may vary. And the template engine is what allows dynamic data. If you have straight HTML, we can't output variables. We can't use logic like an if statement. So with template engines, we can do that stuff right in the view or, or right in the template. So some examples of template engines would be handlebars, dust. These are based on JavaScript. Then we have um, for Ruby on Rails, we have ERB, which is embedded Ruby. Um, you can also use HAML, H-A-M-L. And then with Python, you have Flask. Uh, I'm sorry, with Flask, you have uh, Jinja or Jinja 2. And there's a lot more of them out there. And some do more than others. Some are better than others. 
but uh, you have a lot to choose from, especially with JavaScript. All right, so finally we have the controller, and the controller takes in user input. So this could be from, uh, from a user visiting a page or clicking a link, which makes a GET request, or submitting a form, which makes a POST request. And we also have delete requests, put requests uh, for updating, and these can't be made directly from the browser. From the browser, you can only do a GET or a POST but we do have HTTP clients that are at times built in with the framework that can do that. Now the controller acts as kind of a middleman between the model and the view. The controller will ask the model to get some data from a database and then the controller will take that data and load a view and pass that data into it. Okay, And then from there the template engine takes over and can basically uh, do some logic, do some output for the variables and things like that. All right, and the controller can also load a view without passing it data. So just a plain web page with HTML and CSS, no, uh, no actual templating logic. So here's a very simple example or diagram. Now we have the user which sees the view of the application in the browser. And it can make some kind of request with input to what's called a router. Okay, and their request could be some kind of link that they clicked on, some kind of route. And then the router will call a specific controller method uh, based on that route. And if data is needed, if you need to fetch some data, the controller will then interact with the model, which interacts with the database. And then once the controller gets that data passed back, it can then load a view, and it can send the data to the view, and it, it'll get dealt with by the template engine. Okay, and then once that's all done, it'll send uh, it'll send the view back to the browser for the user to see. Okay, so hopefully that was hopefully you could understand that at least just a little bit. It's it is it's a little tough to to explain. All right, so now I just want to take a look at some pseudo code that I wrote. This isn't in a, a particular language. This isn't code that's going to work anywhere. It's just an example. So how this whole thing works with MVC is you get some user input. In this example, we'll say the user clicked a link or, or, uh, or wrote in the URL yourapp.com slash user slash profile slash one. So ultimately, they want to view the user's profile that has the ID of one. So the first thing it's going to do is go into the routes and it's going to see if see what it matches. So it would match this because it's users slash profile and then <clears throat> excuse me slash one now one can change I mean obviously you, you don't want to just load this one profile all the time this could be anything so that's why we have the colon here in front of the ID it's kinda of like a placeholder alright so it's gonna match that route and then we're gonna just basically um, call this users dot get profile and pass in the ID Okay, so this is calling the user's controller right here. Okay, and the class is going to match this in most cases. And that's going to have a function of get profile. You can see that's right here. It takes in an ID. And then what it's going to do is grab a variable profile and set it equal to this.usermodel.getProfileID. So now it's calling a function called get profile within the model. Okay. And if we go down here in the user model class, we do have a function called get profile and it's passing the ID in. So this is where we want to interact with the database because that's what the model does. So it's calling this.db.get and passing in a query, select all from users where the ID is equal to the ID that's being passed in. It's going to get that. It's going to put it in a variable called data and then it's going to return that data back. OK, so that when it gets the data back, it'll be put in this profile variable. So now what we want to do is render a view. So we're going to render a view that's in the users folder and then profile. And we're going to pass the data we got into the view. OK, and then down here in the actual view file, the template engine will basically make it so that we can insert these dynamic values right in the HTML. Um, many of them use this syntax, the double curly brace. Some use one curly brace. Some use percent signs and curly braces. So it's all different depending on what engine you're using. Um, 
So what it's doing is it's going to display the user's name in the H1 and then an email and a phone number in the list item. Okay, so that's how that all works. Hopefully that was uh, somewhat clear and you can understand. To me, this code uh, it looks a lot like CodeIgniter for PHP, but uh, you know they're all relatively sim similar in some way. Okay, they all go by um, you know the model being the data and the controller being kind of the traffic controller and the view being what the user sees and also um, interacts with. All right, so hopefully you guys like this. Please subscribe if you're not. Please leave a like if you did like it. You can leave a dislike if you didn't. And thanks for watching.